So hey guys. This is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto become a tyrant king and awakens the power of Foxblade. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. He'd been hearing them ever since he arrived in this odd world, voices. No, not just voices, but animalistic roars and snarls, each and every one reaching out to him, begging for him to claim them. To be honest, he'd had little care for them. He already had one cynical beast out to make his life a living hell, he had no need for another. He was far too busy anyway to deal with these bit beasts, as the people of this world called them. Sacred spirits that empowered the humans through partnerships and inhabit their Beyblades, figuring out a way to get back home to the elemental nations to continue his training to get back Sasuke, take down the Akatsuki and become. Hokage was far more important to him than some silly fighting tops game. But no matter how hard he tried, they were always calling to him, and most of the events he found himself watching involved the so-called world champions, the blade breakers. Those cyber bit beasts cried out in agony from the moment of their birth and their shrill cries for help in binary still made his ears ring even now, weeks later. It was disgusting just how many greedy humans there were in this world. But at least those cyber bit beasts were put out of their misery by the blade breakers and had found peace. He actually found himself hoping so. He ended up spelling his own doom to participate in this beyblading thing though, when he scavenged that facility looking for anything of use to help tide him by living in this world. He'd found an intact beyblade in among the rubble and countless destroyed blades. It was nothing special. Just a generic and drab gray one that had miraculously survived the onslaught from that team of self righteous annoyances that called themselves the Saint Shields. Foolishly, he'd kept it. The voices still came, everyone louder than the last, begging and pleading for him to become their master. He'd been tempted not long after, Wild Fox it had been called, and it drew him in. A fox spirit bit beast that had the ability to clone itself, control mild winds and leaf style illusions. But in the end he'd held back, sick of always being affiliated with foxes, and the beast had been forced to escape into the earth to recover its injuries. It wouldn't be much later, though, that things really changed. He'd been drawn to the cries of another beast. One forced to take in too much power, more than it could handle and literally imploded in itself. He felt sorry for it. Used, abused, and tossed away like trash. And maybe that was why he'd held up the empty, generic Beyblade he'd scavenged. Either way, it didn't matter because the spirit of the dying beast had taken the offer and escaped into the Beyblade to recover. Naruto sat silently within the dark warehouse he'd taken to squatting in ever since arriving in this world and stared silently at the object. Within his hand, a drab, gray-colored Beyblade, and within the middle occupying the bit piece was the picture of fierce ebony black-colored dinosaur. It had six gleaming green eyes starting at its forehead and moving shortly down its snout. It had wicked, massive teeth and the Tyrannosaurus body was adorned atop the head, upper arms, spine and upper thighs by a gleaming burnt orange armor while its claws and fangs were a nearly golden shade of yellow. Tyranno, it was called, and it had changed upon changing its allegiance to him. Its scales were once dark brown, its eyes crimson, and armor had been purple. Once he had taken up up Tyranno, however, he was pleased that the voices he'd been hearing had stopped calling for his attention. The 14 year old blonde in orange clothing sighed morosely as he stared at the Beyblade. I guess I'm stuck with you now, huh? He sighed in annoyance. He stored it in his equipment pouch and kicked back atop a crate with his arms reclined behind his head. At the very least, I guess. You can help me win a few of those stupid Beyblade tournaments for the prize money to live on, he mused. It was bound to be more lucrative than stealing the crap he had been lately and maybe he could get a few more answers to the history of these beasts. They were weaker, but so similar to the tailed beasts, and he was curious. He was tired, exhausted even. As hard as it was to believe, Naruto had trouble just keeping his eyes open. He'd trained his ass off this morning, and he hadn't eaten much in the past few days, true. But even then, he'd done that before during a training binge and he'd never felt so tired in his life. No, his exhaustion stemmed from one fact alone. The transparent, spiritual form of the massive Tyrannosaurus Rex slumbering off to the side of the warehouse, taking up much of the free space of the room. It was curled tightly around almost like a ball in shape and was shaking with laboring breaths, and despite himself, 
Naruto couldn't exactly find it in himself to resent Tyranno for the shinobi's condition. Not when he could still see the massive wounds and gouges in the big beast's black hide that were slowly healing bit by bit as the big beast used the newly established link between he and it to heal itself with Naruto's energy. Naruto took a wobbly few steps towards the beast and lay down against its side. It was hard to believe that there were creatures like this in a world full of weaklings, where the greatest of martial arts masters could be defeated with ease by mere genin. It seemed that the only true powers of this world were the holders of the big beasts. Through their connections, they empowered each other and grew in power together. From what he guessed, Naruto was so exhausted due to the fact that when he rescued Tyranno, the big beast was little more than energy particles dissipating in the wind. And it was only through their new connection that the beast was recovering. Basically, Tyranno was drawing on Naruto's chakra, and only his, to restore himself. That meant no Kyubi to help him out, even to give him a boost or the energy could have adverse effects on Tyranno. Too much and Naruto had been launched into a bloodlust that made him. A mere genin barely as strong as an experienced Chunin powerful enough to almost rip apart Jiraiya of the Sanin. There was just no telling what that dangerous energy would do to a primordial beast like Tyranno, a spirit that had lived for thousands upon thousands of years and from what he had gathered, locked without consent or just cause within a piece of rock, sealed with thousands of other bit beasts, many stronger than itself and forced to fight for survival, every day for all that time. Tyranno let loose a pleased rumble as the Uzumaki leaned against its side, and despite himself Naruto felt a smile twitch upon his face before it was quickly replaced by a frown. Those scientists that abandoned Tyranno. The idea made his fists clench in rage. They were so focused upon the bladebreakers so-called, sacred, bit beasts that they couldn't even plan properly, and that was saying something coming from him considering how much of an idiot he tended to be. Tyranno had been locked in a stone for eons, unused to the outside world. They dragged it out, forced it to work with some randomly chosen, fat-ass kid who had no proper training whatsoever in anything besides pulling some rip cord, and they expected them to beat one of the greatest bladers in the world, one who'd grown and bonded with his own bit beast. One of those sacred ones that they were all so fixated on no less. How disgusting, abandoning a comrade for such pitiful reasons. They deserved to be killed most gruesomely and if he got the chance he'd show them how Konoha Shinobi treated trash like them who'd tossed away their comrades. The most important lesson he'd learned was how truly special each and every one of them were. Even then, he didn't see the big deal in any of these bit beasts. They were big yeah, W were behind them. But they couldn't keep up with the boss summons from his world like old Gamabunta, never mind Biju like the Kayubi. Naruto briefly entertained the idea of the Kayubi as a bit beast and snorted. Sure the fox was a constantly angry, prideful pain in the ass, but he was a powerful, constantly angry, prideful pain in the ass. The Kayubi could take on every blader in the world at the same time and win with ease. Naruto felt his eyelids began to twitch as they became too heavy for him to keep open. Damn, he needed to go out and steal some food, and work on looking into a way back home tonight, looked. Like those plans were on hold. Oh well. The blonde yawned, snuggling deeper into Tyranno's side. The beast, despite being a spirit, was remarkably physical. When outside a Beyblade, not to mention rather comfortable and warm, tomorrow, he decided as he settled into sleep. As he did however, he found his mind afflicted and besieged by visions. It was a constant battle. A battle for both survival and evolution. With each powerful foe he overcame, he fed and grew stronger. The only way to survive in this hellish world was to become the strongest. An arachnid, a feline, more. With each foe defeated, he grew just a little bit stronger. The greatest of those whom those tribal humans had locked away in this hell were easily identified by their constantly growing power. The fox, it started with no power of its own besides remarkable speed, and now, now, through defeating and devouring others, it had gained powers over the wind and illusions. Tyranno, for that was his name, growled deeply at his wounded foe, it wouldn't get far, not since with how his bite, and even his breath could kill now since the bacteria in the rotten meat it ate from defeated foes had attached themselves to his teeth, and after biting his prey, said prey could die from the wound becoming infected, but that ran the risk of another claiming his spoil if they came across the carcass later. That could not do in this place. 
that in mind, spiritual power pooled within his mouth. An ability gained from a draconic foe that served him well. With a roar from his gaping maw, Tyranno fired. A beam of power through the air, ripping the body of the fleeing insect spirit in half. The defeated spirit fell and Tyranno rushed forward. The beast pitifully continued to crawl, desperate to escape and given enough time, regenerate. But Tyranno would have none of it. Massive teeth gouged puncture marks straight through the beast's skull, and with a deafening crunch the insect's head was pulped. The spirit, now dead, dissolved into energy, a substance that Tyranno greedily slurped up revelling as he felt his power grow just a bit more. In the aftermath of his meal, Tyranno did not notice the deadly, suffocating aura speeding towards him until it was almost too late. Acting on instinct honed over millions of years by the species he was born from, Tyranno just managed to evade a massive, silvery spike chain covered entirely by the flames of the underworld. With a snarl, Tyranno turned to face his attacker. That proved a mistake as pure tea air filled Tyranno's being. For standing not far away was the strongest beast within the sealed earth. A beast feared by almost all other beasts even before they were sealed. Cerberus, the tyrant king of the sealed earth. The beast was massive, towering above even Tyranno who was one of the biggest beasts within the sealed earth. The canine was covered completely in purple fur, matted with the blood of untold amounts of beasts, and had three massive, snarling heads each. Atop each head and the conjoining chest was obsidian black armor and dangling from around each head's necks were chains of pristine silver, alight with the flames of hell. This was not a beast Tyranno could defeat. This was a beast beyond any other beast within the sealed earth, the undisputed Cain. The only beasts that could possibly defeat this monster were the four sacred ones, and even then, that was only possibly, even with a four on one. He had no chance to run, the tyrant was already upon him. Cerberus crossed the distance between them in the blink of an eye. Flames rushed forth from each head, cutting off Tyranno's escape. Tyranno had no choice, having been boxed in by the flames. With a roar, Tyranno bounded forward, energy once again pooling within his mouth. He condensed the energy right up until he was a few feet from Cerberus before he intended to unleash the attack dead on. Pain registered in Tyranno's senses. Before he could fully unleash the breath attack, one of the chains dangling from his foe's necks lashed out, striking him under the jaw and forcing his mouth upwards and the attack to be shot straight above them. Another chain lashed out, ready to loop around Tyranno's neck and choke him out. On instinct, Tyranno spun on his feet and dodged the chain with a grace unlikely for a beast of his build and then lashed out with one of his strongest weapons, his heavy armored tail. Cerberus roared in rage as its side was heavily impacted by the tail attack and was sent tumbling across the landscape. It was dazed slightly, but no lasting damage was done. Tyranno completed his spin, coming around to face Cerberus' fallen form with power pooled within his mouth once again. With a roar, Tyranno unleashed the strongest beam of energy he could. There was a triple echoing roar that shook the landscape but Tyranno didn't bother to pay it any attention and instead turned on his massive feet and fled as fast as possible. Cerberus did not come to this side of the rock. It stayed hunting other beasts on the other side of the sealed earth. Unless, there were no other beasts on that side left to devour, and Cerberus had consumed and claimed all their power for itself. Tyranno fled, and he never looked back. From that day, he journeyed deep into the sealed earth and fell into a deep slumber hiding his power and his body far away from the other beasts, and Cerberus' senses, until the day he would be released. Ozuma ignored the bickering below him. Instead, he leaned against the wall of the warehouse he and the rest of the Saint Shields made camp in and cast his eyes towards the roof, a frown on his face. The mission was getting more and more complicated as time went on. He was somewhat reluctant to separate the Bladebreakers from their bit beasts. The four sacred bit beasts were different now than they were back in ancient times. The evil that infested the beasts due to the villains controlling them had been cast out by the beasts themselves long ago, even at a heavy price. They were barely a quarter as powerful as they were long ago, having lost much of their power in separating themselves from the darkness that plagued them. The evil they cast out having taken powerful forms of their own as new, evil, duplicates that more powerful than the original beasts. Black Dragoon, Black Dranzer, 
Black Dreiger and Black Draceal. Thankfully, none of the other three had been unsealed when Black Dranzer escaped. But it was troubling that such a powerful, evil beast was somewhere in the world, free to do whatever it pleased. The Bladebreakers had bonded with the Sacred Four, formed friendships with the beasts and would rather die than give them up. If it were a perfect world, Ozuma would be fine leaving the beasts in Tyson and his teammates' hands. But the world was not perfect. The Bladebreakers were not powerful enough to defend the big beasts from all who were after them. Even worse, whoever was after the Sacred Four had possession of the seal that encased Cerberus. That was a problem. In ancient times, the beasts within that rock were far too weak to put up a fight against the four sacred ones, even as weakened as they were now. Somehow, the beasts had evolved and grew stronger within their prison and Ozuma feared just how powerful Cerberus had become. It quite possibly had evolved past the level the four sacred ones were at in ancient times. Back then, Cerberus while not as powerful as them was still mighty enough to give one of them a challenge. Elbit beasts had grown enough to challenge the weakened sacred ones, then just how ungodly strong had Cerberus become. And that wasn't even the worst of it. Rumors had it that king and queen had arrived in town not long ago. Ozuma scowled at the thought of those traitors. A greedy pair of siblings that once belonged to his tribe, gifted with bit beasts because the elders believed they would be a great asset to the saint shields. Only, after stealing the greatest and most valuable Beyblade parts, Within the village and obtaining their bit beasts, they fled and took up a life of crime as parts hunters, seeking the best parts money could buy in the hopes of creating the ultimate Beyblade. And then, if matters couldn't get any worse, there was that mysterious whiskered blonde that had shown up. That guy, Ozuma thought, clenching his fist. Whoever he was, he scared Ozuma. Every blader in partnership with a bit beast had a powerful aura the beasts empowering the bladers and in return allowing the beasts access to humanity's limitless potential for growth. This guy though, even when he first caught sight of him, and only a glimpse at most, Ozuma been almost terrified, the guy had no bit. Beast, as proven when Ozuma found him claiming that dinosaur beast, Tyranno. Yet his aura, it was insanely powerful. No, calling it just that didn't describe the sheer depth of it. Ozuma had received Flash Leopard. As a partner as a toddler and trained relentlessly day in, day out since then. But comparing his own against the whiskered blondes even before he took that bit beast was like comparing a raindrop with the ocean. Ozuma growled lowly, clenching his Beyblade in his hand. There's no more time, we have to seal the four sacred bit beasts now. He snarled inwardly, there's no telling what a guy with that amount of power could do if he got his hands on them. The four sacred ones may be weakened but it wasn't just their power that made them so special. The entire world could be in danger if they fell into the wrong hands. The gray Beyblade was a blur, zigging and zagging between rubbish and rocks that littered the area. Blue eyes twitched and the Beyblade suddenly defied gravity and launched itself into the air, landing on the railing of a cratered staircase and grinding its way up the pole. When it reached the top, it launched itself once again clearing dozens of feet and landing perfectly in front of its owner. Naruto panted, a fine sheen of sweat trickling its way down his face. Man, this is a lot harder than it looks. He thought to himself as he tried pinning down how to get the Beyblade to respond to him by will alone and do whatever he wanted it to. The science behind it was beyond Naruto. But somehow, the Beyblade was connected to him. It connected to his mind, his chakra, and right down to his very spirit. It was a wholly paradoxical feeling, both completely natural and entirely alien to him. In a way, it felt like he was complete for the very first time. Except, he was never lacking anything that stopped him from being complete in the first case. Most of all, he could feel Tyranno deep within himself, contrary to what he believed, it seemed the Beyblade was just a medium for the big beast. Bit beasts in fact seemed to inhabit the very body and soul of the blader, and through that connection manifested themselves through the Beyblades. Naruto was stronger than most in this world already, yet it was obvious to Naruto that himself had grown stronger. Physically, he was stronger and faster. That wasn't even the end of it either. Instinctively down to his very core, Naruto knew he could perform the attack he saw Tyranno unleash in his dreams which, he suspected, were actually Tyranno's memories. 
And that was a whole other can of worms he didn't want to think of right now, inside that rock was a brutal world. Those sanctimonious idiots, the saint shields, more than likely had no damn clue about the ramifications of their sealing method, or that they had basically given that Cerberus creature Naruto had seen in his dreams an all-you-could-eat buffet and therefore grow in power to the point it was now more than just a possibility it was stronger than the sacred four big beasts the bladebreakers had, and those four were the only ones strong enough to beat the tri-headed mutt. Idiots. Pushing those thoughts aside, as hard as it was for Naruto to come up with even these simple answers, he still managed to piece it together after a few hours. Somehow, he and Tyranno had entered a symbiotic relationship. Tyranno fed upon his chakra and grew stronger, and in return Tyranno, who was bonded with him now, empowered him like the other bit beasts did for their bladers. Naruto was quite happy he decided to take pity on Tyranno now. He had been lacking totally in long-ranged attacks before, and now he had a pretty powerful one that required no hand seals at all. Being a good person did pay off sometimes it seems. He had even already come up with a name for the attack. Smirking, the blonde pointed towards a tree at the other end of the area they were in, the collapsed building he first found Tyranno in. I've seen how you use your attack normally, so let's see how it works in Beyblade form. He stated, all right Tyranno, let's go, Tyrant Buster attack, he commanded. A roar resounded within his mind. It was the roar of a king declaring their dominance. The roar of a king declaring his power to the world. The gray Beyblade erupted with blinding orange light. The light compressed around the Beyblade, the sheer power being brought forth causing the very air to crackle with orange electricity. Then, with a resounding boom, the Beyblade shot forth like a rocket. The force of the liftoff shook the entire clearing, and before Naruto could even blink, the Beyblade had cleared the distance between it and the tree and blitzed right through it, snapping the tree in half. And the one behind it, and the one behind that and continued on for another four trees until it shattered a stone to pebbles, Naruto whistled, mentally commanding the Beyblade to return to him. Man, you're pretty powerful Tyranno and to think, this is without even your own customized blade. He commented as the Beyblade shot back to his feet, spinning steadily. He really should go find a way to get some parts soon to build Tyano a proper Beyblade. It would help for when he went to win a tournament or two, the prize money for. Winning in this little game was ludicrous. No wonder so many people wanted to beat the Blade Breakers they must have been raking it in. The wind suddenly whistled, as if an incredibly sharp blade was swung with great force. Naruto didn't even twitch as two Beyblades launched themselves from the trees and as one crashed into Tyranno's Beyblade. One was a bronzed color while the other was white. So, those presences he'd noticed were making a move against him, huh? Naruto had been content to leave them alone if they left him be, but it was clear that live and let live attitude wasn't going to be reciprocated. A loud grinding noise blanketed the area as the two Beyblades ground against Tyranno. It was a good thing that even though the Beyblade was drab looking that those scientists had designed it and its counterparts to be of league level quality. Otherwise Tyranno's blade would have been shredded already, these two were pretty strong. Not to mention, Naruto could sense the deep wells of power within them, meaning they had bit beasts. Snorting, the blonde cast his eyes towards the trees just in time for an older pair to walk out and join him in the clearing. A dark-skinned boy with long, styled, white hair and a pale girl with shoulder-length ebony-colored hair, they both appeared to be around 18 years old and were wearing a matching pair of black pants and designer white jackets it took you too long enough he commented idly forcing tyranno to push back against the two beyblades with enough force to counter them it was a good thing tyranno's main strength lay in physical strength and it transferred over to his medium i caught you tme the minute you started so what do you want the blonde asked forcing his eyes not to stray under the girl's neck despite the male clothing she wore she was pretty curvy and to naruto's great regret Jiraiya had more influence on him than he'd like to admit. The older boy snorted in apparent amusement, a haughty look on his face. The name's King, and this is my sister Queen, he replied. Waving towards the girl who was eyeing him with a predatory look in her eyes, were parts hunters, he said simply, as if that explained everything. King and Queen? Were these two serious? Who named their kids those? Naruto stared at him blankly for a moment before grunting. 
he forced Tyranno to up the ante and pushed back with all his strength and launched the two Beyblades towards their owners, where they landed spinning at their feet, and, Naruto questioned. The girl, Queen, gave a chuckle at his apparent cluelessness. See, when we see parts we want, we simple beat the owner in question in a bay battle and take them when we win, she replied. Both King and Queen erupted into laughter as he stared at them. Apparently they thought he was shocked. Well, he was. But probably not in the way they were thinking. Now Naruto knew he wasn't the smartest guy around, but were the people in this world freaking lacking common sense? Did it ever occur to them that he might just pick up his Beyblade and leave? Or did that never occur to anybody they'd ever faced before? When their laughter finally died down, King reached into his pocket and pulled out a decently large brown bag. The old boy tossed the bag down in front of Naruto and the blonde's interest was piqued. When Beyblade parts slipped through the opening, pretty high quality ones at that, if he wasn't mistaken. So here's the deal kid, when we beat you we'll be taking whatever parts of your Beyblade look good, but if you somehow beat us, then you can have all of these parts. King stated, lifting an eyebrow in challenge, deal? He questioned. Naruto couldn't help it, he just couldn't, the blonde threw his head back and laughed loudly. He laughed for near 30 seconds straight before he died down to a chuckle, wiping tears of pure amusement from his eyes. He'd noticed something while watching all the bay battles since he'd arrived here. While Beyblades with Bit Beast were much stronger than those without, that really only applied when the blader was conscious. Without the blader being awake, the connection dwindled immensely and very little of the Bit Beast's power made it through to the blade, and with the blader unconscious the Beyblades themselves were little more than sitting ducks with the inability to fight back. Shaking his head, Naruto smirked at them both. I have a better idea. I think I'll just take the parts and not bother at all with the bay battle, he commented, then he disappeared in a burst of speed. The pair's eyes widened in shock, what the king exclaimed in bewilderment. Where'd he go, queen hissed. There was an amused whisper behind them, behind you. They both screamed in fright, but before they could even whirl around, they both felt small pinches at the back of their necks, and then they both fell to the ground unconscious. Naruto smirked as he eyed their down forms. Morons, he commented, snickering while stepping over their comatose forms and picking up the bag of parts. He cast his eyes towards their Beyblades, idly spinning in circles with no aim or reason. Take them out, he ordered. Tyranno blitzed forward faster than any normal human eye could hope to follow and deftly smashed into both Beyblades one after another. Both Beyblades fell limp just like their owners, without even the power to fight back. Normally, Naruto wouldn't really steal other people's prized possessions, but these two quite deserved it he mused, what goes around comes around after all. With a mental command, Tyranno's blade shot up into his hand and he stowed it away within his supply pouch. Then, Naruto crouched down and took apart both King and Queen's Beyblades. Ooh, that's pretty cool. He commented as he found a second, smaller form of attack ring under Queen's normal attack ring that stuck out like two wrist blades under her top attack ring. I like this, I might use it. He mused, standing up and sealing the parts into a small tattoo under his wrist for safekeeping. When he was done, he found himself standing above the unconscious forms of King and Queen, holding the bit pieces of their Beyblades. They depicted two ram like creatures that Naruto guessed were their bit beasts. He debated for a moment whether or not he should take them. After finding out the boons he gained from Tyranno, he was sure if he brought back such valuable creatures, he might just get promoted straight past Chunin to special Jonin. Ultimately though, Naruto set the bit beasts down within their owner's clenched hands. As deplorable as these two were, he just didn't want to be the one that knowingly separated friends, possibly even family depending on how close they were, from each other. Still he mused as he left the clearing, today had been pretty profitable. Now all he had to do was build a custom blade. Win enough cash from tournaments to make a fair living until he found the means to return to Konoha from this world, and he'd be golden. Naruto may not have known about this fighting top game that was done here, but still he had to admit the league level quality parts he got from those two were good. A shinobi had to have an eye for quality equipment, no matter where they were. Take shoddy gear. With you into the field, it could get you killed, after all. He'd had to go get a beginner's guide to putting it together just to be sure he didn't end up breaking the pieces as he was putting it all together, 
but a few shadow clones transformed into dollar bills had taken care of that. But he couldn't rely on that trick too much since people would be after him for the money. Did the dishonesty of it bother him? Yes. But the lack of options hadn't left him much choice. And he intended to add interest to when he actually went back to pay for it after he managed to earn a bit of prize money from those. Beyblade Tournaments Speaking of Beyblades, Naruto clicked in the bit piece with Tyranno's image on it that he'd removed from the generic and drab gray one he'd kept into his newly made one. The Beyblade itself was a black blade with orange highlights and designs. According to the book he'd gotten, it was a heavy assault and speed type. He considered adding the dual blade under the attack ring for extra offense that he'd taken from Queen, but looking it over, he decided against it for now. Needed to find a way to fix the design flaw of it, first. It was vicious and brutal, designed strictly to gouge, slash, shred, and all that kind of, fun, stuff. But the issue with the sadistic ring was that it was only designed to work in one direction, if it was. Jammed or hit hard enough to force it to make it counter spin on. Itself, it'd cause his own blade shred itself to pieces from the inside out. Again, Naruto may not have known about this fighting top game that was done here, but a shinobi had to have an eye for quality equipment. No matter where they were since taking shoddy gear with you into the field could get you killed. Well, Tyranno, what do you think? Naruto asked as the transparent form of the bit beast appeared behind him and looked at the blade before bobbing his head in an unmistakable nod. Allowing the ancient reptile spirit to retreat into the medium, Naruto couldn't help but shake his head at the sheer stupidity of those two thieves. Seriously, if someone threw what the prize is away from them and gloated about it, it shouldn't have taken a lot of mental processing for someone to figure. Why not just take the prize and run while they gloat? Guess there was nobody who was opportunistic here or something. He knew the people here had their pride to protect, and they were proud of their Beyblade skills, since it was as big a deal here as being a ninja was back haunt. But as they said, too much pride could be the death of a person. And yes, he fully understood the irony of him saying that. Looking at the battle top, Naruto sighed and put it in his pouch. He'd been practicing getting Tyranno to respond to him, but he wasn't sure just how good he was doing with it. More importantly, he needed to figure out how to get some food, a bath, and get his clothes cleaned up. Walking away from the wrecked building he was using as lodgings, the Uzumaki stretched. Sheesh, he really needed to figure something out. Problem was, according to the government, he had no social security number, no passport, no license, absolutely nothing. For all intents and purposes, he did not exist. Made finding any type of work he could do impossible to apply for and earn a living, well, time to find something, he sighed. If worse came to worst, he'd have to resort to theft to get what he needed, this street rat. Lifestyle sucked but he lacked the means for anything else unless he wanted to resort to criminal activities. The sheer lack of options was so frustrating. As he was walking around an alleyway Naruto was wondering what he could now, but then he suddenly heard the sounds of a struggle and he then heard a girl yell and that caused him to rush in the alleyway but not wanting to be seen. He then hid behind a dumpster and looked to see what was going on. As he did, a flash of pink got his attention. He blinked, then shook his head. Was that, no, it was too dark a shade to be Sakura-chan. But the girl was in trouble. The apparent ringleader looked her over as she struggled, her arms twisted behind her back by some of the others. So help me, when I get out of this, you're going in the hospital. The girl spat, her eyes somehow narrowed into cat-like vertical slits, adding onto her appearance. Ooh, kitty's got claws. He laughed, roughly grabbing her face by the chin and making her look at him. Hey. A new voice at the end of the alley shouted and the gang members turned to see who it was. Standing there, eyes hard, was a teenage boy. He was clad in a slim, form-fitting orange tracksuit outfit with black on the upper shoulders area and the color extending from around the neck and shoulders, down the front and sleeves, as well as around the waist, a white swirl on the left side, a red swirl crest on the back, orange pants, his feet were covered by black sandals that covered the in step and ankles, yet left the toes and heels exposed. Covering his head was short, blonde hair that stood up all over like the spines of a sea urchin, and a black headband with a metal plate attached to it that had the symbol of a spiral arrow engraved into it. He had some bandages on his thigh and a carrying case along with it and a small pouch on the back of his belt. 
What really stood out were the pencil thin, whisker like markings on his face, three per cheek. Let her go, he said. The thugs looked at him, then laughed. Bawahahaha. Get a load of this, boys. Some kids trying to play hero? The lead thug laughed. But Naruto took this as an opening and then rushed at the lead thug who stopped laughing and saw Naruto coming at him. Get him. Then ten of the thugs rushed at Naruto and punched the first thug right in the face and a blow sent him falling into a nearby pile of garbage. Then the other thug attempted to punch Naruto but Naruto blocked it and then countered with a kick to the thug's waist knocking some air out of him. Then Naruto grabbed the thug's arm and threw him at another approaching thug causing both of them to crash against a brick wall knocking both thugs out. Then a fifth thug pulled out a knife and rushed towards Naruto. But he saw this coming and got low to the ground and did a sweet kick under the thug forcing him to drop the knife and punch the thug in the gut knocking him out. Then a sixth thug tried to catch Naruto off guard with a haymaker but Naruto ducked and then chopped the back of his neck thus making the thug fall onto the ground knocking him out. The last three thugs attempted to attack together as they each rushed at him to try to take a swing at him. But Naruto grabbed the first one and spun around and made sure to knock into the other two and when both were defeated he threw the last one right into the first thug right back into the garbage pile. Tisking, Naruto turned to the last of them, the ringleader. Dida don't come any closer, or the girl gets it, see? The ringleader held the girl in a headlock with the knife one of his thugs dropped at her neck. Naruto bent down and grabbed a small pebble, then just flicked it at the ringleader. The pebble hit him right between his eyes with a surprising amount of force, making him let the girl go and Naruto ran towards the ringleader and drop kicked him, sending him flying to the brick wall hitting a trash can and the leader fell right on his head, knocked out cold. Naruto frowned. Honestly, these guys were pathetic. Not that he was expecting much from them anyways to begin with, but seriously? Couldn't people in this world do or learn anything right unless it revolved around some fighting top game? Hell. He could have taken these guys back before he even learned to fight at the academy. They were so weak. He hated wasting his time and skills slapping around losers like this. Well, okay, helping that girl before anything happened to her was hardly a waste, but still. Speaking of, he went over to her. She had tan skin and cat-like features. Her hair was pink and her attire was composed of a pink Chinese-style outfit similar to what Tenton would have worn, with. Magenta highlights, a single yellow armband on her left arm, two red fingerless gloves, pink Chinese style pants and pink colored shoes with magenta highlights. She even had a head bandana, which was pink, tied in her hair in a way so that the ends stuck up like cat ears. She also had golden colored cat-like eyes, which made her look like more of a cat girl. You okay? He asked, getting a nod in reply. Yeah, thanks, um. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. He introduced, Mariah. She said, nodding. Where did you learn to fight like that? Most people settle things by Beyblading. Excuse me if I had other priorities. Besides, are you really going to complain about how I felt learning to fight was higher on the list than Beyblading considering the situation you were just in? Okay, she had to give him that. Looking at the out cold thugs littering the alleyway they were in, it was hard not to be glad this guy. Learned fighting skills as opposed to Beyblading, otherwise she'd be in real trouble right now. Fine, fair enough. E.H., just got into Beyblade, actually. Wanted to see what the hype is about it, but, well, need lessons, hit a bit of a wall with practicing on my own, he shrugged. At that, Mariah perked up, a way to repay her rescuer coming to mind, so, lessons, huh? I can help with that, but no way am I going easy on you. Naruto laughed. Glad to hear it, Neko sensei The next instant, Mariah's fist connected with his gut. Lesson 1. Do not call me that. Okay, Mariah sensei then. He amended, sheesh, what was with pink-haired girls and being violent? Not my fault you look like a cat. She huffed at that. Still stands not to call me that. So, how's your skill level, anyway? Naruto shrugged, then Mariah saw him pull out an orange and black Beyblade. Decent enough to wear Tyranno here responds to me, but not sure just how good, though, only got to that point recently. Mariah nodded, recalling how tricky it was getting a Beyblade to respond to the will of the user back when she was learning that herself. Nearly made her quit the game altogether, it was so difficult, 
She understood why this guy would want some assistance and help improving in that case. Alright. I normally never do something like this, but I'm going to teach you everything I know about Beyblade battling and I won't hold anything back, so let's get you and your Beyblade into fighting shape. Naruto wasn't all that surprised when Mariah pulled out a pink. Bay depicting some kind of feline. Pink cats seemed to be her theme. Okay, and I have somewhere we can go to practice, he said. Lead the way. Nodding, the blonde lead her back to his residence, seeing her surprised face at the ruined building. He shrugged. Good place to practice without anyone bothering me. Naruto excused, getting her to nod as he lead her inside and left her for a quick second. When he came back, he was wearing something on his arm. It was white in color and it also had a large pink colored visor lid while the shape was like a gauntlet mixed with a small vacuum cleaner with some buttons on its side to make it look like some kind of pod. Seeing the pink cat stare, the Uzumaki elaborated, launcher. What was wrong with the usual rip cord launchers? A lot more simple than that bulky thing. Naruto shrugged, no idea. I didn't make this, just use it, was a piece of left behind equipment that still functioned I found here, so why not? Took me a while learning how to do it, though, actually. Thinking of selling this thing, he said, tightening the straps on his arm. Sighing, Mariah shook her head. Sheesh, why were people so stupid? They kept making things more complicated because they felt it made figuring that stuff out caused them look smart. Wouldn't simplifying a complicated thing do that better, then? Well, either way, she had an agreement to fulfill. She attached Galux to her launcher and inserted her rip cord into it. Okay then. 3, 2, 1. Let it rip. The two launched their Beyblades and sparks shot as the metal attack rings grated against one another while the top spun. Naruto's shoulder twitched and Tyranno smashed into the pink Beyblade, forcing it back as his own top tried pinning Mariah's between itself and the wall. But just before it hit, Galux zipped away and Tyranno hit it instead. You use body signals too much, she informed, recalling her Beyblade to her. Naruto scowled. Well, excuse me for this being harder than it looks. Mariah held up her hands. Hey, 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 I didn't mean that in a bad way. Trust me I get it. It's tricky getting the Beyblade to respond as if it were part of you the way your brain does with deciding on the way you move your limbs. Was in that body language phase myself. I know it's hard to do. Naruto sighed, sorry. Relax, it's okay. Like I said, been there. Easy to understand why you're frustrated. She looked at her Beyblade, again, she instructed as Naruto retrieved Tyranno and Mariah nodded, then went about gathering objects and using them to set up an obstacle. Course. Okay, show me how good you are at commanding your blade. No body signals, she instructed. Nodding, Naruto then tried the next step, having Tyranno move to the left without making any signals with his body. Launching it again. As Naruto watched his Beyblade he uncoingly began to signal Tyranno to move left until Mariah smacked him on his shoulder, making the blonde Uzumaki lose his focus and Tyranno simply fell down on its side. You did it again, Mariah said. Again, we're not stopping until you get the hang of this. Naruto picked up his Beyblade with a sigh and loaded it into the launcher he wore before sending it spinning into the obstacle course again. Mariah was watching Naruto launch Tyranno and he watched his Beyblade move around some of the obstacles, until it crashed. Into an empty peanut butter jar. Naruto groaned as he thought he had it that time. Ugh, I'm. Just no good at this, I'm used to fighting my own battles directly, not through some medium, Naruto grumbled. At that, Mariah perked up. Wait, what? What was that? I said I'm used to fighting my own battles directly, not through some medium. The girl perked up, I see, so that's it, huh? Naruto asked. What you just said, you're used to being in the thick of it on the front lines of a fight, but now you feel like you're stuck barking orders from the rear while your blade does the fighting in your place, right? Yeah, really annoying, Naruto sighed, then his eyes widened, oh. Mariah nodded, that's where the bulk of your trouble with this is coming from. You need to get used to this proxy type fighting with your blade. Naruto grinned, okay. That took care of step one and realizing what his problem was. Now he just had to find a way to fit it. He nodded, before a thought struck him, say, Mariah, not to shift topics, but what were you doing when we met, anyway, before those guys? Jumped you? Naruto asked. 
Mariah looked down and mumbled something. Huh? She looked up, blushing, I said I was looking into where I could go find where my old friend Ray was in town. The tiger guy on the blade breakers? Naruto asked, sitting on a crate. Blushing worse, Mariah nodded. Naruto sighed. It was almost like Sasuke and Sakura all over again. So what about you? Mariah asked. Hmm? Naruto looked up, not much to know. Not from around here, never did this Beyblade thing before. Naruto shrugged, keeping in mind just how much of an understatement his remark that he wasn't from this dimension. He sighed, that reminded him of how he had no way back yet, and how he couldn't remember how he got here in the first place. I gotcha. No wonder you wanted help with getting used to Beyblading, then. His, for lack of a better term, mentor nodded. Yeah. Seen it a few times, but just don't get a lot of it, for instance, why add a second word onto the name of the Beyblade? That's usually for the sake of differentiating a bit beast from the Beyblade it's in. Mariah informed, then blinked. Do you even know what a bit beast is? She asked. Holding out his Beyblade in his upturned palm, Naruto snapped his fingers and the bit chip glowed, and suddenly, the transparent, spiritual form of a massive, ebony black colored tyrannosaurus rex that was adorned with gleaming burnt orange armor while its claws and fangs were a nearly golden shade of yellow and had six gleaming green eyes starting at its forehead and moving shortly down its snout took up the room they were in it roared at her as if saying you think causing mariah to pale naruto cleared his throat and the dinosaur went back into the beyblade uh sorry about tyranno so back on topic naruto Looked at the top he held, in the case of things, I just called Tyranno by his name, but if I were to do something like add that retractable attack ring I have onto my blade, then I'd call my Beyblade itself. Tyranno switchblade? Or something like that? Huh? Attack ring? Pulling it out of his supply pouch, Naruto flicked the ring he'd gotten from Queen to Mariah and she caught it, looking the part over. Design flaw, don't wanna risk Tyranno. So not using it until it's fixed. The ninja explained. Mariah nodded. Made perfect sense to her. If anything put Galux at risk, no way in hell was she going to add it to her Beyblade. I see, and yeah, you're right about the Beyblade naming thing, she said, handing the ring back to Naruto. Looking outside, Mariah frowned. Sheesh, it was getting late. Hey, Naruto. I gotta go. Just keep practicing, okay? Be back later if I have the time and will help you out some more. He nodded, I understand. Thanks for the help. Mariah nodded, going outside and running off. In the meantime, try coming up with your own style for blading. She called over her shoulder before she was gone. Alone now, Naruto looked at Tyranno's Beyblade. My own style for it, huh? Wonder how that could go, the end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.